locations. Okay, so he's got a lot of victory locations on the map as well. So he is out there somewhere. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think my disposition is fairly accurate to the day, including my extra um, reinforcements that are already on the field. So do I assume that his is as well? I, it's a dangerous assumption to make. Um, assumptions make an ass of you and me, as they say. Um, I, I dare say the Prussians are up here somewhere, uh, around Schmutten and Althoff, because they've got those two victory points. The Russians are ahead of me somewhere. I don't know if they're spread out. I don't know if... Um, um, I, I, I've just basically... I don't know, <laughs> if I'm honest. I've got to send some scouts out. That's what you would do in real life, so we've got to send some scouts out. Now, if I start, I'm going to just take those fixed units off. Um... I'm not going to have, uh, as I said, a frontal attack on a, a well-defended position and throw away half-decent troops for the sake of nothing. I am quite spread out. If I go into the jump map, there you can see, I am very well spread out, almost halfway across the map. So my plan, I, I, I initially, uh, my plan was, on my right or southern flank, is to get this cavalry and to start scouting um, this area here around Molvitten. Um, the reason being, I want to join up with these troops eventually around Rothenen and Zaysen and swing my whole right flank round so it's facing north. And I'm hoping, if it's not too busy around sort of Klein, Salzgarten and Mellenkeim, um, push my whole army north or, or my whole southern flank north um, to try and box the Russians in. I'm not going to do anything around Eilau itself. It's all about getting these troops. Um, so we've got Gudan. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We've got Gudan. And who else do we have? Uh, the first division around here. Um, info leaders on top. Uh, view leaders on top, should I say. Um, and Joffroy. And we'll get this whole southern flank up facing north. Now, we're going to put my scouts out. I don't have many cavalry down here. Only some chasseurs or chevals. So, uh, I've got some there as well, some more Chassar Chevals. So, I'm not overly relying on my cavalry. I'm going to use them for scouts in the south. And it's going to be the infantry, the grunts job, if you like to do the hard work. Got quite a bit of artillery um, to push their way up through. I'm not worried about time. Got loads and loads of time. Um, so, slow and steady wins the race. Um, yeah, and I said these troops around here, around Zaysen. Uh, so, who have we got down here again? Um, let me see. There we go. San Hilaire, he will eventually, when um, these guys are uh, level with them on their flank, sw then swing out, spread out, and swing north. And then hopefully by that time we'll have some visibility and we'll be able to see the enemy dispositions. So the territory down there, um, just to have a look at their approach, it, there's a lot of wide open spaces here. Uh, there's not many marshes, not many fields, but there is quite a lot of high ground up uphill and down dale sort of thing. So the, it might be a little bit tricky to, to get everybody in position, but there's also quite a lot of hiding places behind woods, down these ravines and stuff like that. So we might be able, if we're savvy enough, or if I'm savvy enough, to, to hide large portions of my army, and that's what I'm going to do in the centre at Eilau. I don't want to show him where I'm strong, where I'm weak. Um... But yeah, that, that's the kind of ground that we're going to be going over. So it's fairly open. We've got a river to cross. Hopefully nothing's in Molvitten. We don't know yet anyway, because it's only two hexes. Um, up to the, uh, what's that, the east of these woods. And then deal with anything in this wide open ground. My only concern is, I know he has a lot of cavalry as well. And, I'll show you in a minute, I've identified some lovely ground for a potential cavalry charge. That, to me, is also some lovely cavalry ground. It's nice and open. There's not a mass amount there to be disrupted apart from the high ground, low ground. Um, but what I did, or what I have noticed, around this place, Pershel, that, to me, is some lovely cavalry ground. If we go in a little bit further, and where are we looking on the map? We're looking here, so my sort of right centre. Um... We do have some beautiful ground, uh, lovely ground for our potential cavalry charges. And the order of the day is I'd love to be able to get my heavy cavalry all in position, well hidden um, around Sir Palin, around these ravines and low ground, out of the way of any Russian guns, 
try to do it covertly as much as possible, which I can do, take a bit of time, but come down these ravines, cross the river, over the frozen lake, I hope I can go over the frozen lake, I'm not entirely sure yet, um, but hopefully, he might get, catch a glimpse of them every now and then, but certainly, or I might dangle out a fish and put some maybe light cavalry out and or some skirmishes or troops or something just so he thinks, oh, he's not moving heavy cavalry over to this position. But this ground around Sir Palin, I've identified it uh, as, a, as a nice place to gather cavalry. So eventually, from my southern flank, I'll swing these guys around, come up to Klein Salzgarten. And when I'm in Klein Salzgarten, have a sort of a front line running across here, heavy cavalry behind. And I'm hoping, in my mind... Uh, it's just a plan um, that his front line is sort of spreading north, uh, northwest to southeast around this Kriegerberg, um, and be on his flank. That's my plan. Now, around Alau itself, got a lot of troops in quite an open position. If he's got his artillery up in these areas, Al Klappen, and um, I, I mean it, that's I, I don't know for sure, but that's where I would have my artillery, and certainly I'd move it forward. Uh, to that the position overlooking Eilau if it was me, but I don't know yet. Um, but I do have some ground, again, that I can hide quite a big army. Um, I don't want him to see all of these guys. Um, I'm not getting into an artillery duel with him because I don't have the numbers of guns. Um, as I said, I've only got about half of what he's got. Oh, one thing I will mention, um, rules and house rules and things like that. I, I'm trying out this... Um, Usually I have optional fire results and optional melee results uh, checked. But after a few discussions online, um, I, I want it to be a little bit more random. So I haven't selected those two optional rules. Um, so hopefully we get some, I'm not going to say strange, but um, maybe unexpected fire results when it comes to melee and firing as well. So, uh, okay, just keep that in mind. We've got a guard here. Um, guard I don't want anywhere well not anywhere near the front line but I want them in a nice safe position so having a look there I might bring them back with a guard cavalry or somewhere up here but within striking distance to protect Eilau early on if he decides to attack Eilau I'm not too bothered about that because there is a lot of defensive position to the west in the southwest of Eilau that I can place some guns um, overlooking Eilau and like I say, I've got the time. I'm in no rush at all. It's um, I, I'm going to use it as a chance to try and destroy his army rather than let him escape, rather than take victory locations. So that's what I want to try and do and not lose. Um, my heavy cavalry um, and my guard cavalry, which I've got a lot of, they're going to start a long sweep down towards Vraskishten um, and then through Zaysen, up through Zaysen to the south of Sir Palin, to take a position somewhere along here that's protected and try and hide them. Now, this is assuming he doesn't see anything and he doesn't do anything himself. We've got to have a plan in place rather than just sort of do it all willy-nilly. Um, around the cloth mill, um, who have we got here? Um, we've got some more cavalry in here. So these guys, I'm going to send them north to deal with the Prussians. So I'm going to send some scouts out up here, um, some dragoons, up to uh, Althoff along this road through this wood. Um, there's no sort of uh, sorry, marshes. There's no sort of easy way around. It's very open. But I'm hoping they will be able to start to see these Prussians. Now the Prussian. It's not actually three armies. It's, I think it's a Prussian corps, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I need to find out what the Prussians are doing. Ideal world. We've got the guard in reserve, and there must be a hinge point somewhere maybe around here, Schmoditten and Schloditten, um, that, that hinges between the Prussians and the Russians. Now, that would be an ideal place to, to break them, to get into the middle of them and separate them. Um, but we'll see how we go on. The, the terrain there isn't the easiest going. Um, we've got to go over this frozen lake. I don't know if we can actually pass over frozen lake. These represent uh, frozen marshes or, or, you know, soft ground. Um, and then we've got a river there, or the main road itself, um, and then a river all the way along to uh, Schladitten itself. So it's not the easiest um, approach there. So we've got to be a bit savvy, and it's open ground as well. And if you've got a lot of guns there, we're going to get shot to pieces. So they're going to have hard time. I'm not going to press it home too much, but hopefully it will take his eyes off a little bit from what I'm doing in the centre. Now, I'm going to use my first couple of turns 
when they become unfixed, so after th two or three turns, to get these guys back into cover. Um, and, I mean, maybe even sort of set a trap. See if he wants to take a low. I don't know if he will take it. He was so adamant that he wanted to defend. So I'm assuming that he's going to stay in a defensive position and he doesn't want to move stuff around. Or he's played a complete double bluff and he's a genius and he's just going to attack me from the off, which will have to... Um, I'll have to have a plan B. And the plan B is to establish a front line. It's as simple as that. I won't go into it in detail because I'll be honest, I haven't really thought about it in detail. But the ground I'm in, I mean, overall, the whole map, the ground leads to good offence and good attacking positions. There's high ground, there's low ground, there's ravines. So I'm hoping it won't take too much to actually establish a front line. I mean, look at that. You can go in between the frozen lake and the river. High ground here. There's lots of potential on this map. So it is a really nice map by the look of it. I'm quite excited to be playing this. Quite excited to be starting it. Uh, so I've looked at my avenues of approach. I've got a plan in place. Uh, I guess the next thing to do is, is actually start moving um some of my troops around so i, I can only move um who's down here freon with his second division i can actually only start to move them so i'm going to get some scouts out start moving everybody um, um as i said uh, it's a bit boring watching me just move everybody around there's nothing exciting happening um he's got to do his turn and I'll get back to you each turn, and we're going to do like an abridged version. So hopefully you enjoy this. Make sure to leave some comments as we go along, and let's see how we get on with the Battle of Eilau, PBM against a human, and 80 turns worth. 